I think we're, <laughs> that's, a, that's a really like there's a lot of answers to that one. Um, I think right now where we're at is um, we're at a mind shi mindset shift where we need to figure out how do we make sure the, that what we're recruiting and who we're recruiting um, is doing it with passion. You know, we we got the stigma where you can't be successful unless you go to a four-year degree, get a four-year degree, but. You know, a lot of us build, a, you know, big percentages of our workforce are skilled trades. So we as a country, need, I think, need to, to shift to, hey, you're wired to work with your hands. Let's help you do, be the best at doing that. Um, and if you want to go to university, you can go to university. But we're still building things. We're still in an industrial revolution. And we need people to, who can do that. You know, there's so many, you know, skills gaps and trade shortages that we're never going to keep moving forward because we've already shot ourselves in the foot. Well, one, let's keep people in interested in, in manufacturing. There's so many other um, avenues that people can go into that they don't want to go into, you know, they don't want to go turn wrenches or they want to be in like big factories or building products anymore. They want to be like YouTube influencers, right? So let's make it honorable. Let's make it sexy. Let's make it fun. And we do that with the kids now because they're not going to know any better, you know. But as they, they, they're, it's going to engage them and it's going to inspire them to keep doing what they want to do, using their hands, and they don't have to follow the norm, you know. So, and it, it's just a long play for us because if we don't, we're not going to have electricians, we're not going to have plumbers, we're not going to have mill rights, we're not going to have the people we need to continue to do things that we need to do. Last I checked. There was no crazy invention for plumbing. Like the toilet is still the same as it's been for 100 years, right? So I don't think it's going away anytime soon, but we have a shortage of plumbers. So social media, you know, is one. You know, that, like I mentioned before, um, kids want to become YouTube influencers, all right? And by the time they get to college, manufacture is not what they want to do. They want to be in like communications or marketing or web development or video game design, right? Or they don't even think that they need to go to school, but they can just be online making money that way. So um, that's a big, you know, that, that well will get low and get dirty eventually. So that's a big, is a big challenge is social media and what it's done to our uh, current, you know, you know what it also enables with our current you know workforce so um, I also think we're not using it properly like maybe we make social media sexy for manufacturing right but um, you've got to do whatever you can to grab today's youth now you know, if you want a successful future in 10 years from now what are some ways you can do that like, um, I think you know I think uh, um, getting involved with uh, one maybe hiring someone for social media on, in, at your company like marketing has shifted to that social media aspect so much so that, you know, that's an important aspect of most, you know, companies and organizations these days. So making sure that you have someone responsible for that and is out there engaging kids and engaging cool content and, you know, really showcasing the cool stuff we know about manufacturing, right? We're, we're building crazy stuff out there. These kids don't know that, all right? Most people don't know that the car I drive is 100% electric. That's our fault. <laughs> so, you know, and we have a social media team, so we need to continue to be pushing that, pushing the envelope out there, and, and let's play their game. Let's cater to our audience. Um, I think it's because no one's cornered the market on great ideas, right? So, um, there's going to be some great ideas that people might not be doing or gone away from or um, are looking for that someone else is doing, you know? Tide rises all ships, right? So we can't like take this siloed approach. Uh, we need to help continue to build our manufacturing organizations up um, together. And so I think it's just like the, the, the symbiosis that happens at these events, the networking that happens at these events, the brainstorming, just like walking away a little more fired up, like, you know what, I am gonna do that. We are gonna do that. We're gonna start, we're gonna change this process or we're gonna hire differently or, you know, we're gonna take a step back because we know we can take, it'll make us, allow us to take three steps forward. So, um, also just gives, gives them an idea of what's going on with the schools and what's going on with education as well um, so that they have a better idea uh, how to play that game moving forward, so. I think it's in, this is what I said, why you need to come next year is because if you want to invest in your business, you need to know what's going on out with everyone else's business, right? Um, this is a great place to learn, and a great place to understand what to do, and more importantly, what not to do. Hey, can you go tell me a little about the START program that you, your brainchild? <laughs>
Well, um, I can't take 100% credit. Uh, like I said, it was just uh, a combination of, of what we were doing in recruitment and what um, the learning and uh, development team was trying to do with service training. And essentially, it's a 12 week um, intensive training program where we take students at a community college that we have essentially put all our stuff there um, and run them through this program uh, in the hopes that we've got highly trained, successful, bought-in technicians on, on the other end. So the idea is working with schools that are, you know, already have great auto tech programs um, with administration that are bought in that really care about future programs and pushing the envelope and being progressive, which is tough for schools sometimes. Um, we come in, bring in our tools, bring in our server, bring in our cars. It's our instructor, so the cost is very minimal to the school. Um, the investment's more on us, but because it's, we felt like there was no, you know, schools were taking too long to get to where we needed them to be. So it's like, hey, we're just going to come to you. And um, it's been awesome. Students interview to get into the program. They're paid while they're going to school. They're, you know, they're, it's almost 60 hours a week because it's 7.30 to 5.30, five days a week. They're also doing rotations on Saturdays at the local service center. So they're, they're applying what they're learning. Um, in a real, you know, in the pace and the demand. It's also a great way for the field to observe these candidates and say, hey, you know, I really like that person. Or, oh, that girl, she worked really well on, on some of our teams. We want to hire her. It's still a good way for them to kind of see, like, what the talent is and scope that out. Um, we then go through a, um, we go through some interview processes with some of the regions and needs that we have. And then... You know, upon you know they get an offer, and upon successful completion, they go to the service center that we've either uh, picked them for, or they have been picked from, um, and that can be anywhere. It can be locally, or it can be anywhere across the country. Um, that's the beauty of kind of being like one team, and not, not you know, we can send them to, to service centers all over the place, and it's the same. You know, they're going to make the impact the same. So it allows us to spread the field and figure out, hey, what are where are our needs? But you know, boom, and they make the impact on day one. You know, like the thing I, the thing, I, the biggest feedback I got was, well, how do I get more? Because all I had to do was show this guy where the bathroom was, and then he went straight to work on day one. Like I, there was no whole hand holding. Like it's a pretty novel idea, right? Make impact on day one. Productivity goes up. You know, buy in. Like no one feels like they're not making, an, you know, they're not making pulling their weight, you know, so um, instead of going, you know, we went out and got our workforce and trained them, um, and we have these great schools to work with, and it's a great buy-in to the community. It's a real testament to the communities as well, because they're the ones feeding us their students, so. Do you have a success story that comes to mind, a person, a young person that maybe you yeah. came through? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, uh, I won't, you know, name names, yeah. but a, a young lady, um, came through the program, she was, um, and the day of her interview kind of told us like why she was in auto tech. I was like, why, well, why auto? Why do you want to be a technician? She was like, well, I was driving home to, you know, Central California. I was pregnant and, you know, realized, you know, I was on, stranded on the side of the road and realized like my tire was, was flat and I was, you know, like realizing like, I'm crying and breaking down and I can do better for myself and for my, my future, for my son. And so she wiped her tears, pulled out the manual, changed the tire, got home and then realized like, I want to go into auto tech. So then she went back to school, started enrolling in these programs and Rio Hondo's got some great programs. And so and they, the thing is they really focus on the students. And so, um, you know, she bought in and just killed it, worked her tail off while working a 60 hour a week job, going to school full time, she, you know, raising a, a child by herself. Um, and so when she got into the program, it was like a no brainer. And then, so she was doing this while still working, even though we told her not to work. And she almost graduated top of her class, you know, in that, that cohort, um, wanted to move to Arizona where family was. So we sent her to Arizona. She was welcomed with, you know, open arms. And before we knew it, we had, we were opening up for another school up in Northern California. And she's like, hey, I'd like to put my hat in there. I really enjoyed my experience, and I want to be an instructor. I want to make sure that these kids get the same experience I got. And we're like, okay, you know, you have no formal, you know, training or, or teaching background, but here's the process. And so she put on a whole lesson plan and presentation and killed it. Like, 
absolutely annihilated it. Like there was, you could, there was no doubt. Like the, our team was like, Natalie is our person, right? And um, so now she's an instructor. She's instructing her first class. And so two years ago, she was just trying to figure out where she, you know, trying to finish up life and figure out like being an auto technician. And now she's instructing. She's making a great wage and she's training the future technicians of Tesla. And like, I'm so proud of that because she, she decided to just like pull herself up by her bootstraps and figured it out. And Tesla was the benefactor of that.